Today we're going to look at confusion species of corvids. Now corvid is the family name for the group of birds that contains crows, jackdaws, rooks, ravens, chuff and magpie. Um, there's one other bird that we don't actually get here on the Isle of Man that is included in that um, group and that is a jay. Now, species belonging to this family are one of the most clever species of bird. They've got the largest brains of all birds except for parrots. Example, crows in Japan have been observed dropping walnuts onto the roads for cars to run over and the car cracks the outer shell and the crow waits for the red traffic light so that they don't get run over going onto the road to get the tasty nut that's inside. Crows have also been seen using sticks to poke at food that's out of reach. And corvids have long been used in various poetry, including the famous poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe and The Jackdaw by William Cowper. The first of our confusion species that we're going to look at is a jackdaw. And the collective noun for jackdaw is a clattering or a train. Now the weight of the jackdaw is 220 grams, which is actually exactly the same weight as a jar of Nutella. Um, jackdaws are the smallest members of the crow family. They're about the size of a pigeon. Jackdaws pair for life. They share food and they really like to nest in man-made structures, especially chimneys. They'll also build their nest to the size of the space available. Now, jackdaws communicate via their eyes and adult birds have really pale eyes, often seen as being blue, whereas the younger ones have brown eyes, the juvenile back, uh, jackdaws have brown eyes. They like to eat insects and um, small animals such as earthworms, woodlouse, spiders, mice, frogs, snails, slugs. They also eat eggs and young birds, so they are omnivores. And the next of our confusion species is the rook. The collective noun for a group of rooks is a parliament. And rooks are a bit bigger than jackdaws, they're around 300 grams, which is the same weight as a large bar of dairy milk chocolate. Now, rooks live in a wide variety of habitats and they're seen much less in towns or urban environments than some of the other corvid species. They live and they forage on farms and in agricultural areas, but they do tend to avoid cities. Like rooks, uh, sorry, like jackdaws, rooks are omnivores, meaning they eat both plant and other animals such as worms, grasshoppers, insects, small birds, mammals and eggs. So the carrion crow, if you listen to this um, species, it sounds different to the jackdaw and to the rook in the slide before. And the collective noun for a group of crows is a murder. Now the carrion crow is much bigger than the rook. It weighs around 500 grams, which is the same as a bag of raisins. Now you can tell a crow from a rook as rooks have feathers around their thighs and at the base of their beak, and rooks have the grey beak, whereas the crow has a black beak and it doesn't have any feathers at the top of its thighs. Now, crows are found on every continent except Antarctica, and that's because they have learned to adapt to a variety of different environments. And research suggests that crows actually change the, their sound if they change flocks. So their sound and their calls are a little bit like a regional accent. The raven is the largest of all the corvids. It's a huge bird, almost unmistakable. Um, it weighs between 800 and 1,500 grams, which at one kilogram, that's roughly the same as a bag of sugar. Now, the collective noun for a group of ravens is a conspiracy or a unkindness. And the raven's long been associated with death and dark omens, but the real bird's actually somewhat of a mystery. Different cultures from Tibet to Greece have seen the raven as a messenger for the gods. 
Celtic goddesses of warfare often took on the form of ravens during battles and the Viking god Odin had two ravens which flew around the world every day and reported back to Odin every night about what they saw. The Chinese said that ravens caused bad weather in the forest to warn people that the gods were going to pass by and some Native American tribes worshipped the raven as a deity or of itself. The raven's also a bird that's strongly associated with Norse mythology and appears in numerous places on the Isle of Man. So ravens are adaptable, they're scavengers with a huge diet. Um, their diet includes fish, meat, seeds, fruit, carrion, garbage, and they can be seen regularly on the uplands of the island. The chuff is one of the smaller of the corvid species and the collective noun for a group of chuff is a chattering. Weighing around 300 grams, it's equivalent as a whole packet of fox's milk chocolate oaties. Um, chuffs are amazing flyers and they're able to perform various acrobatics in the air. They use their long beaks to extract edible food from soil and also animal dung. They particularly like foraging around in cow pats. Chuff also eats parasites and they can be seen on the back of sheep, of sheep sorry, collecting ticks from the wool. And male chuff build nests on the sea cliffs or inside of abandoned buildings, caves, mines. And the nest is usually made from dry vegetation and then lined with wool. The hooded crow is a grey and black bird and it's similar in size to the carrion crow. It weighs roughly around 500 grams, which is the same as a bag of mixed fruit. Now the hooded crow, the beak and the legs are both black. And like all of the other crows, it is omnivorous. omnivorous so its diet is that um, eats both plant and animal material. And it's a constant scavenger. It is always on the lookout for different food. On coastal cliffs, it will eat the eggs of gulls and cormorants and it will steal um, small chicks if it can do. And finally, the magpie. So the collective noun for a group of magpies is different depending on where you look or who you ask. The ones that I found listed are a parliament, a gulp, a mischief, tidings or a tittering. And the old BBC article says a tiding charm or a gulp. Now a magpie is one of the smallest of the corvid species and it weighs around 200 grams, which is the same as a packet of Nern's coconut and chia oat biscuits. The magpie's tail is roughly the same length as its body. And it's thought that it's this long because it helps them make quick turns in the air when it's flying. And this is really important as it helps them get away from predators as magpies are not known for their speedy flight. And European magpies have demonstrated a really remarkable ability that they're actually able to recognise their own reflection in mirrors. And this is something that was once thought to be only belong to humans that we could only recognize ourselves um but out of all the species that have been tested there's only four ape species a bottlenose dolphin and asian elephants that have demonstrated this ability so magpies are really very clever <laughs>